Hi there. In this question, we're told that a plane is flying horizontally at P at a height of 150 meters above level ground when it begins its descent. P is 5 kilometers horizontally from the point of touchdown O. The plane lands horizontally at O. OK, we can see all this from the graph as well. Taking O as the origin, X, comma, F of X approximately describes the path of the plane's descent where f of x is equal to a cubic function where we're given c and d, we don't know what c and d are and it's described as x goes from minus 5 to 0 okay so if we look at the graph that's minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and 0 okay and both x and f of x are measured in kilometers so this 0 0.15 kilometers here is the 150 meters we were told that P is directly above minus 5. So we're asked to, in question 1, A part 1, show that D is 0. Okay, well, to show that D is 0, we could just substitute uh, 0 in because over here we can see that uh, when X is 0, F of 0 is 0. So let's sub it in, and we get uh, 0 0.0024 times 0 cubed plus 0 0.018 times 0 squared plus c times 0 plus d is 0, and that implies that d is 0 because all of the other terms will disappear. So let's scroll down a bit. Question 2. Using the fact that P is the point minus 5, 0 0.15, or otherwise, show that C is also 0. Okay, so let's sub in minus 5 into the function. So we have F of minus 5, and we know that is 0 0.15. So let's sub in minus 5, and we get 0 0.0024 times minus 5 cubed plus 0 0.018 times minus 5 squared plus c times minus 5 uh, plus d which we now know is 0 and that should all be equal to 0 0.15 okay so we know everything except c so let's just evaluate it and we get that minus 0 0.3 and we get 0 0.45 minus 5c is equal to 0 0.15. If we add the two terms on the left, we get 0 0.15. Uh, bring over the minus 0 0.15 minus, and it becomes a minus. So that's equal to 5c. So 0 is 5c. Therefore, 0 is also c. So d is 0, and c is also 0. So at this stage, we can write out the function without c or d. So let's just write that out. Let's go f of x and write it out properly now. It is 0 0.0024x cubed plus 0.018x squared and then the other two uh, terms are 0. And now we can get f dash of x which is question b part 1. Find the value of f dash of x, the derivative, uh, when x is equal to minus 4. So let's find f dash of x first of all and then sub it in. Okay, so the x cubed goes to 3x squared, and the x squared goes to 2x. Uh, and now we need to sub in uh, minus 4. So 3 times 0 0.0024 is 0 0.0072, and then x squared would be uh, minus 4 squared, so that would be 16. And then 2 times 0 0.018 is 0 0.036. And then the x goes in as minus 4. And if we just evaluate all of that, we get, throw it all in the calculator, and it is minus 0 0.0288. So that's f dash of minus 4, which is the slope of the tangent to the curve when x is equal to minus 4. Use your answer to part B, 
one above to find the angle at which the plane is descending when it is four kilometers from touchdown. Okay, so the tan of the angle is the same as the derivative. Okay, so maybe you didn't know that, but uh, the tan that the angle makes with the positive x-axis is always the uh, same as the derivative. So if you have uh, an x and y axis like this, and if you have some function, uh, let's say it's like uh, like this, then tan of that will give you the same thing as uh, the derivative. So yeah. Now, so what we have is um, the derivative is minus 0 0.0288. So that's going to be equal to tan of theta. So what we need to do is get the tan inverse of minus 0 0.0288. And we want our answer in degrees, so make, so make sure your calculator is set to degrees. And we get minus 1.65 degrees. So what that means is, because it's going downwards, we have a slope of, of minus. So we have it like this. This is theta here. 1.65. So we can say that the, uh, the plane is descending at approximately 2 degrees. Because we're asked for it to the nearest degree, we can say 2 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so if the angle is minus 1.65 relative to the positive x-axis, then it's relative to the horizontal, and a minus angle just means it's it's down lower. Okay, so keep going, and what have we got next? Show that minus 2.5, 0 0.075 is the point of inflection of the curve. Okay, so remember your curve goes something like this, and the point of inflection will be this point here where it twists. And to get the point of inflection you need to say that f double dash of x is equal to zero. Now remember that my first derivative simplified is 0 0.0072x squared plus 0.036x as we got above. So if we get the second derivative we will get 0 0.0072 times 2x plus 0 0.036, which is 0.0144x plus 0 0.036. Now, at the point of inflection, that'll be equal to 0. So we need to bring the 0 0.036 to the left. And we get minus 0 0.036 is equal to 0 0.0144x. And then we can find out what x is. And that implies, if you punch that into the calculator, that x is equal to minus 2.5, which is what we were hoping to get. And then we need to substitute that back into the original function, which is, of course, let's remind ourselves what the original function is. It's 0.0024x cubed plus 0.018x squared, and there was no other terms. So now what we need to do is get f of minus 2.5, and that's going to be 0 0.0024 minus 2.5 cubed plus 0 0.018 minus 2.5 squared. And that gives us, if I punch all that into the calculator, 0 0.075. Okay, so just to tidy that up, so we say, therefore, point of inflection is minus 2.5 comma 0 0.075. Now, if xy is a point on the curve, y equal to f of x, verify that minus x minus 5 comma minus y plus 0 0.15 is also a point. Right, well, what we need to do is we need to substitute minus x minus 5 into the function and see if we actually get minus y plus 0 0.15. So let's go f 
of minus x minus 5 and see what we actually get. So if we sub that in, we get 0 0.0024 minus x minus 5 plus 0 0.018 minus x minus 5 squared. Sorry, I forgot to put in the cubed, so there we go. Hmm, now this is not so straightforward because we have to cube. Um, let's move, give ourselves more space. Why is this not so straightforward? We have to cube a binomial. A binomial is an expression with two terms in it. And uh, I'll just as an aside uh, show you the rule for doing this. A plus B cubed using the binomial expansion is A cubed plus 3A squared B plus 3AB squared plus B cubed. So as an aside and keeping that in mind this is how I'm going to cube my binomial. Um, just while we're at it, I suppose, let's show you what the, the uh, binomial square is. That's a plus b to be squared. Uh, hopefully you know this one. You should know both, in fact. And they're not in the tables, so uh, it is important that you learn these off or become familiar with them. I mean, you can use the binomial expansion formula, which is on page, it's on page 20, uh, it's called the binomial theorem. You can use that uh, theorem to expand, but uh, you might uh, you might get to know this off by heart. So, so we get that it's equal to 0 0.0024, and then we expand that out. So it'll be the first thing cubed. So it's um, minus x cubed uh, plus three times the first by uh, squared minus x squared by the second thing, which is minus 5, plus 3 times minus x by minus 5 squared, plus minus 5 cubed, and then we close my big bracket, and then we add 0 0.018 uh, times this binomial squared, so that's minus x to be squared, plus twice minus x by minus 5, plus minus 5 squared, and then we close that bracket. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of tidying up. So what do we get? We get 0 0.0024 times, well minus x when we cube it just gives us minus x cubed. Uh, plus 3 by minus 5 is minus 15, and minus x when we square it just gives me x squared. Minus 5 squared is plus 25. 25 by 3 is 75. By minus x gives me minus 75x. And then minus 5 cubed is minus 125. And then we add 0 0.018 times x squared plus 10x, because the minuses cancel, minus by minus, and then plus 25. Okay, so what I really need to do now is tidy all that up, so multiply it all out, and remember we're trying to guess that it's minus y plus 0 0.15. And y is the whole function, so let's see if we get that. So we get 0 0.0024, oh, sorry, minus 0 0.0024x cubed, minus 0.036x squared minus 0.18x minus 0.3 so you do all this in your calculator and you should get the same result plus 0.018x squared plus 0.18x plus 0.45 now, do any of these terms cancel? Yes, these x terms cancel. And I can add together my x squared terms and my two constants. So I will do that. And I get minus 0.0024x cubed. If I add those together, I get minus 0.018x squared. This is looking very familiar. 
If I add these two last terms, I get plus 0 0.15. If I take out the minus from these first two things, I get minus 1 times 0 0.0024x cubed plus 0.018x squared. And then I add the 0 0.15. And lo and behold, I get minus y plus 0 0.15. Because y is, of course, the function. So that was uh, quite involved, and uh, you'd have to be very careful now not to make mistakes with that. But uh, gladly we didn't. And finally, find the image of minus x minus 5, comma, minus y plus 0 0.15 under symmetry in the point of inflection. Now remember, the point of inflection was minus 2.5, comma, 0 0.075. So that's my point of inflection. If you're doing a uh, symmetry under a point, you go through the point and out the other side, the same distance. So it's really like um, a translation. You go through a translation to the point, and then from the point you move onwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take minus x minus 5 uh, as an x-coordinate and see how does it get transferred onto minus 2.5. How would you get from minus x minus 5 onto minus 2.5? Well, first of all, you'd have to get rid of the x. So you would add the x. So this is how I would do it. I would add x, and that would cancel out the x. And then I would add uh, 2.5. Because if I added 2.5 to minus 5, I'd get minus 2.5. So that's what I need to do. So I'm going to do the same thing that minus 2.5 then will be mapped onto. Because if you think about it, over here uh, we have minus x minus 5, comma, minus y plus 0 0.15. That's that term. The middle term is our point of inflection. And our final term is the thing we're trying to see what it's mapped to. So what is minus 2.5 mapped to? Well, we do the same translation. So we have to add x. So we get minus 2.5, add x. And then we add another 2.5. And we get that the 2.5s cancel. So we just get x. So x is what the uh, image is, well, for the x-coordinate. Now let's do the same thing for the y-coordinate. We're starting off with minus y plus 0 0.15. And how does it get to 0 0.075? Well, first we have to add y. So we know it's been mapped to 0 0.075. How did we do that? Well, we have to add y and then add another 0. Point, hmm, no, subtract 0 0.075. That should do it, because if you subtract 0 0.075 from 0 0.15, you would get 0 0.075. It's exactly half. Okay, so that means that 0 0.075 would be mapped to, under the same translation, you'd add y to it, so you get y. Oh, sorry. You'd add y to it, so we get 0 0.075 plus y, and then we subtract 0 0.075, because that's what the translation is telling us we need to do, and the 0.075s cancel, and we're just left with y. So the image is, in fact, x comma y. So we just need to write that down. And we are done. The image of minus x minus 5 comma minus y plus 0 0.15 is, I'm running out of space here, but it's not much to write in, xy. That was quite a, a long and involved question. So there you have it. Uh, that's the end of this question. I hope it was of some help to you. Bye for now.